Hi everybody and welcome to this All Divisions Tips, Routes and Suggestions video for the Blast Off Tournament here on the BK Golf Clash YouTube channel. Hope you're all doing well. Please do hit thumbs up on the video. It does help support the channel and make sure you subscribe as well. Totally free to do so. We're playing a full nine of the Nam Hay Cliffs in this tournament. We don't usually get these holes that often in tournaments. So great to look at the overviews here of all nine holes with my suggestions on routes and elevations for all divisions. Bear in mind you will need to tweak the elevations depending on the wind strength and direction that you have, but these will give you a good starting point to begin to plan your approaches on these nine holes. Some excellent opportunities and some tricky routes as well to deal with. So let's get started with hole number one. The first hole we have is a fun par four, especially in tailwind. If we do get any form of tailwind, it's the white arrow all day and every day. We want to be going for green in one and that is bouncing on that little island there. 10% extra on that drive. We're going to need some top spin, not too much though, because you do not want to overshoot the green and go into water at the back. Um, but the idea is obviously to bounce over and roll a good distance onto the green. Bear in mind, if you are short and only just make the green, you will have an overpower putt at best to reach. Otherwise, you're looking at a wedge or hopefully a simple tap in for the eagle. Power three ball needed there. The other route, crosswind, if you're not feeling brave in crosswind or definitely any form of headwind, we should go with the black arrows. 10% on the drive, plenty of top spin and max left spin. Get yourself right down to the end of that first piece of fairway before the general direction kicks to the left. And that should leave you with a short iron. Now in Tour 10, when this was back in Tour 10, I was playing the short iron at plus 30%. So good couple of options there. Hopefully we get some tailwind because this is going to be a fun must eagle hole in which case on hole number one. Very short par three for hole number two. This one I play at plus 15% elevation from all tees. And it's so short that actually rookie division, this is a short iron shot and we're going to be bouncing before the bunker. Not much spin needed at all here. Maybe a little bit of top spin or a little bit of back spin or even no spin at all but a very good chance for a hole in one. Bear in mind, there is a little bit of a slope just before the pin that goes from right to left. From the middle tee here, this is going to be uh, a long iron shot, so usually would have been Goliath for me, but obviously now we're not in tour play, we could be a bit more selective. And from the back tee, either gonna be a long iron or a wood club. This is not a shootout that we're using any drivers from the third tee. So plus 15% all divisions and the most common route to play is bouncing over that bunker and rolling up to the pin for a hopeful hole in one. Hole three is a difficult par five and we're gonna to have to be very, very careful how we play this hole depending on what the wind is doing. Drive, I'm always gonna go the right side. You do see people in tour three try and blast it over the left side, but it is so difficult with the bounce there and very, very easy to either misjudge your landing position or your adjustment and end up getting a terrible kick and going into the drink. So for me, it's always going to be that little right-hand section of fairway. Plus 20% needed on the drive. And the idea is to get as far down as we can, of course, without rolling into the rough or even worse, off the cliff. The reason for that, we want to be as close to the uh, green as possible for our second shot. Now, when I say close, we're still not gonna be close. We are gonna need a 180 yard wood club here. So big dog from rookie division and the second shot, if the wind is in favor, we're looking at just doing a rough bump directly before the green. Or if of course you've got more advanced clubs, then it's gonna be cataclysm or it's gonna be the guardian. Cataclysm is good for the rough bump if the wind permits. Obviously we can go directly over there, uh, which would be 0% as a general suggestion. Uh, what we have done in the past also is use the Guardian here <clears throat> and that would be obviously applying max backspin and you're not looking at the rough bump there, you're looking at bouncing on the short bit of fairway before the green and then holding and getting that max backspin to just pull you back towards the pin. This is a difficult shot though because depending where you are on that first piece of fairway your target may be further down the cliff which would mean you were going to lose distance and obviously the more you stretch out to judge your overpower, the more 
elevation you are aiming at. So that is going to increase the distance of your shot. So getting the amount of overpower here is absolutely key on that second shot. Obviously, if we have horrendous headwind, we're going to have to switch to those blue arrows, lay up with uh, a long iron, most likely minus 10%, and then take a short iron over the water to the green itself, which would be plus 30. Very difficult hole though here, we are gonna see a lot of birdies, but if we can grab an eagle here, it will be a really good advantage. We have a par three then for the fourth hole, and this one, general elevation, 20% from all tees. Most common route shown here is to bounce where that red cross is. Now there is a little dip in the fairway there that we need to try and land in to get a, as consistent a bounce as possible and then we just bounce over that thin strip of rough and roll towards the pin. Bear in mind, if you are gonna err on the side of caution, go a little bit more left than right. If you miss right and you come in without uh, enough backspin, you will roll down the right-hand side of the green into the rough. So there is a danger of that here if uh, you don't get the line or the adjustment quite right. So that's the usual thing. That is obviously a long iron from um, first and second tee. Now, it will be a wood club, obviously, from third tee. The other option, which I haven't illustrated here, but people do play, is just above and to the left of the red cross, on that little patch of rough, there is a rough bump here as well. So it's up to you which you fancy doing. Obviously, rough bumps generally are a better chance at a hole-in-one, but will carry a little bit of risk as well, especially if you don't adjust or hit perfect. So the choice is yours there on hole number four. A par four then greets us for the fifth hole in this tournament. Most likely going to play white line here, definitely uh, in crosswind or any form of headwind. It's going to be white route all the way. 10% on the drive and we're looking to go as far as we can up to that point on the fairway, illustrated by the tip of the first arrow. From there, you have a very makeable short iron for the eagle. There is a very nice spot to play from, which offers you a great line to the cup. Second shot, I would play mostly at 0%. Obviously you may want to put 5% on it if we do have some crosswind or you can obviously offset. It depends what your preferred method is. But a very good short iron spot there which is uh, worth a go. If we do have tailwind then the blue line is an option but it's not a consistent option. The fairway, a spot to aim at there is very small um, so you will obviously be needing um, probably a power five ball to go for that and a good amount of wind push as well. But bear in mind, you're gonna need a little bit of left curl, left spin as well, and some luck to land on the short grass for that. So it's not a guaranteed method to go to green, but is worth the risk if you fancy it in tailwind on hole number five. Okay, on to hole six and look at all the arrows we've got to look at here. This is a brilliant hole, especially in tailwind. It's a par five, if we do get the right window, we're going to see a great chance at an albatross here and maybe, maybe even a condor. I think it has been done before. White line if we have tailwind. 10% is what I've put, but I've also put plus 20 there because obviously if you do get a lot of wind push, dead straight tailwind is going to carry the ball a lot more than 10% and you could end up missing the island completely. So you may want to think about a little bit more elevation there in straight tailwind. But the plan is to bounce on the island with some topspin. Get yourself over there. Make sure you've got enough topspin to get over there. Thor's hammer, high level APOC, big top are also good if you can cope with the lack of accuracy. And get yourself uh, rolling down towards that green for a great chance at albatross. Now the blue line is using the island, but it's a little bit more of a precision shot. So this would be then using a great amount of backspin to land on the island and then hold. From there, you're going to have a sniper that plays at least 30% elevation for the green. If, of course, we have straight headwind or cross headwind, the island for me is a no-go. I'm going to go left-hand side and we're going to need some wind resistance here. Plenty of topspin, plenty of right spin and also right curl because that landing point there slopes down from the right to the left so the ball is going to get kicked out to the left and you'll end up further away from the hole. 10% on the drive for that one as well and then you're going to look at a wood club playing plus 10 over the water and to the green. That's the grey arrows. So lots of options here. Let's hope for some tailwind though because it is a very very good fun shot to try and make the green in one. 
The last of the par fours now, hole number seven. Really no point putting any more arrows than one here. It's a dead straight hole, so there's only one way to get there. How many shots it's going to take to get there is going to depend very much on the wind direction and the wind strength. If we have tailwind, we can land on the start of that second piece of fairway, get your top spin on and get down there for a simple eagle. Obviously, if there is headwind, we're just going to have to lay up and deal with it. But generally, it plays at 10%. But the idea is, obviously, in all scenarios, we should get as close to the green as possible according to the uh, allowance provided by the wind. Bear in mind where I've got the red cross here, there is a little bit of a bumpy spot here. Stretch out if you need to, move your target around because you will find the second bounce does kick off to the side there. So make sure you have a decent ball guide and you are aiming right to allow for that kick so that you go down the center of the fairway and you're not kicked off into the left or right that would end up in the rough. So there we go, that is hole number seven. The cliff shootout, the notorious cliff shootout for those Tour 10 veterans. They will know this hole very well and I learnt uh, Namhe cliffs in Tour 10 back in the day. This was one of the shootouts you didn't really want to see out of the nine of them to be honest, or at least I didn't. This is tricky. We're going to have to bounce over definitely from uh, any tailwind or crosswind bouncing over with the wood club, 10% extra. The fun starts here in headwind because the wind effect here is fairly huge. So you may want to be playing directly on the green if you can, especially from the rear tees in straight headwind with a load of backspin. Bear in mind in all winds, the half of the green above the pin does slope back down. So if you come in a little bit too hot, the ball will roll back down. So this is a possible approach here. However, if you're going for the hole in one, I'd aim slightly left rather than right because the green does slope from left to right from the pin going to the right hand half of the green. So this shootout was notoriously tricky um, and I reckon we will have some challenging wind directions here, especially when you have to sometimes adjust down into the ravine. This is not a pleasant hole, uh, so it, we have to treat this one with a little bit of caution in hole number eight. And finally on to the ninth hole. Again, we've got a couple of options here. Let's look at the uh, nice tailwind option first. That's with the white line, 20% on the drive, bouncing where the red cross is. We're gonna need a few bars of top spin, plenty of left spin, and also some left curl here so that we are aiming center of the fairway between obviously that mid fairway bunker and the rough on the left. Uh, so the quarterback is good here if you've got it in a good level. Plenty of curl is needed though, so you need to choose your driver carefully. Some players like to bounce on the red cross and try and thread the needle between those two bunkers on the fairway, but for me that is far too risky. If we play the, the left spin and the left curl shot as shown here, your second shot is a very nice bounce on the island over onto the green. Now there isn't a funnel here, not what I would describe as a funnel, but it is what I would call as a nice line to the cup and does actually have uh, a fairly good chance of dropping, not a wonderful chance, but it is a chance. 10% on the second shot. Crosswind, if you're not feeling brave for that or any form of headwind, absolutely go with the blue line. Again, it's 20%. You want to get down there towards that end of that piece of fairway. But again, the very end of that does slope down. So if you come in too hot, you will end up in the rough or rolling down the cliff into the drink. Again, as I said, 20%. From there, you will have a wood club shot rather than a long iron, and that's gonna play at plus 10. But important to get the speed and the line right here. Uh, the green does slope a little bit down towards the back of that one. So that doesn't afford the best chance, but it is a safe route if we do get any form of headwind. On hole number nine. Thank you for watching this video here on the YouTube channel. If you want plenty more Golf Clash content, including walkthroughs, shot replays, and tutorials, please do check the channel homepage, bkgolfclash.com. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.